Hi, Dr. Paul Hader, Master Herbalist and Spiritual Teacher here, and today I want to talk about baking. <laughs> he probably never thought I'd be talking about that. Well, you know, I used to bake a lot, but now I eat a lot of, you know, years ago, but now I eat a lot of uh, fresh food. But once in a while I bake, and I love baking, there's no doubt about it. We have an oven inside the house, we have an oven outside the house. We <laughs> We have a uh, you know, preparedness for every possibility because we have Maria, you know, so I'm I've changed things a little bit. But what do you do in uh, the fact like you know, I'm a vegan, I don't eat my eggs, and what do you do when you don't do that? You don't you add eggs to baking. Well, there's a lot of al alternatives to using eggs. You know, eggs kind of a, a, brings moisture to a baked good and also holds things together. And it's a great way to allow yourself to find another way to stick things together. One of my favorites is aquafaba. This is the liquid that comes out of beans, which is really kind of sticky, and uh, it reminds me of egg whites, really, tell you the truth. And it has hardly any smell, especially if you get it from garbanzos, white beans, cannelli beans, things like that. Uh, they are, it's very uh, nice to add to, especially, you know, big goods that don't have a lot of flavor. Maybe, you know, if you're going for a white cake or something like that, you can add this. And it really does a great job of, uh, you know, doing the job of holding everything together, sticking things together so you really feel good about your baked good and it comes out great absolutely positively so you might want to do that on a regular basis and uh, check it out take some aquafaba make your own you know i have an instapot and i bake, actually make my own beans uh, a lot of times black beans too and i use black beans for things i'll get that in a minute and it works great for uh, the aquafaba works great instead of oils, and also sometimes I throw in some banana in there too, though, which is really great. And another thing is tapioca flour. It's really a great way to stick things together and also has no flavor, and it's been used for a long, 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 long time. So I, I recommend you use it. Now, it's also called cassava flour, or yucca flour, that type of thing, and it really does a great job of sticking things together. And I use about a half cup per recipe. As far as the aquafaba goes, I use about three or four ounces of that, and it really does a great job. As far as the other things go, rice flour. You know, rice flour, as far as that goes, and sprout brown rice flour does a great job of holding things together. You can also get glutinous flour, uh, rice flour, and that is really sticky. Sometimes too sticky for most things, and I find that uh, uh, brown rice flour actually works better. And about a half to two-thirds of a cup uh, average recipe works really well for holding things together and making a great baked good. You're going to have to play around with these to see which ones you really particularly like. And I love aquafaba and a couple more. I'll get into some more here. Also, organic, all things, all these things are organic. Uh, organic, exanthin gum, exanthin gum. And this is a, a gum made from the dead bacteria of a particular bacteria and is killed and uh, does a great job of sticking things together. Really great for soups and stews and uh, gravies and that type of thing you want to make and it make, thickens it up really nice. And really you know, also works well for baked goods and you can uh, you can try a, a quarter teaspoon it doesn't take much i'm telling you so a third of a teaspoon to add to your baked good and it really does thicken things up really amazingly well you'll have to adjust and find out you know if you're making a huge uh, cake or something you might have to put more in or less in and you'll have to adjust for that so that you can get it to exactly what you want and it really works well for that type of thing. Organic arrowroot, which is another a root, which does a really great job. And very sticky. Uh, kind of reminds me of some other things, but uh, really makes a great egg replacement. And about one tablespoon for average recipe does a great job. 
And it grows in Florida and it grows in the tropics and grows all over. And uh, it comes up like a weed, I'm telling you. And so you can pull up your own arrowroot and uh, grind it up and put it into a recipe also. And you can buy it in uh, any kind of health food store. Uh, usually right there where you would find other products like this too. Also chia seeds, uh, it makes an aquafaba, which is really great and really good. Also um, other flax seeds does this also. You can take some seeds, about a quarter of a cup or so, add some water, put it in the fridge overnight, and it pr produces this aquafaba-like sticky substance, which does a really good job, and flax seeds do the same thing. And that really, it can be used for baking and does a really great job. And about three or four ounces for average baked good really substitutes uh, adding eggs. Another one I like is using tofu or organic tofu. And about uh, really the silken variety, the really soft one, really does a great job as, as an egg replacement, not the hard or firm or, or extra firm. Those are too hard. Uh, you want the silken variety. And you want it organic and you want a quarter of a, a cup or half cup per average baking recipe. And you have to play with that also. And that gives more protein to your, your uh, actual food or your baked good also. Soy protein, which is another thing, which you can grind that up. It's a powder. You can buy it as a powder. You can take a soy protein, which is in little pebble-like things, and you grind that up also. And it really works well. About a quarter cup uh, will mix in with your water and add that into your baking recipe, your batter. Really works well to uh, add protein and also stick things together, make a nice batter so you can have that cake or cookies or whatever you want to do. Also, take particular things like this, organic white beans. These happen to be can cannelli beans, uh, which are really good. Hmm, I love beans. <laughs> and beans in general for me really get along really well, and it's really good for the digestive tract. It helps with probiotics and helps build up, you know, getting the... Uh, microbiome going and uh, it is as important for every aspect of your body and you can take cooked white beans and they do a great job of holding moisture in your in your your baked good and also pull things together and usually about I find about a cup does a really good job of uh, adding things in there and it's really good also it gives you a lot of fiber and, and makes your baked good much healthier than what you would ever have in general. If you're working with chocolate, then go to uh, black beans. Black beans are amazing because they're anti-inflammatory and do a really good job of uh, actually helping the body with inflammation. And inflammation is the first step towards disease. So we really want to stop that, you know, period. <laughs> and you, know, you should see, you know, how many uh, dried black beans that we have. We have pounds upon pounds of just an amazing way. Put them in the Instapot and cook those and then put them in the freezer. You know, nowadays you can even buy them in little cartons that are already pre-cooked and they do a great job. You can pour out also the aquafaba from that too and use it, and which does a great job. Or you can just use the whole thing. And for dark colored batters, you know, that you're going to be using, uh, especially like for brownies, I love it in brownies. Uh, you can use black beans and really do, does a great job. Another thing is organic taro root. I find this works really great. It has a low glycemic index and it sticks things together also. And it has really very subtle flavor. It really goes well with just about everything, kind of like white beans. And I, I find it really does a great job. About a cup, uh, it does a really good job to the average baking recipe and uh, they're one of my favorite foods because they have a like I said a low glycemic index of 20 so really you break down into sugars really slowly and it's great for diabetics great for anybody who has you know uh, digestive problems also because it's soothing and, and healing for the digestive tract and uh, it, they taste like potatoes. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And in my mind, I, I love them. And we have a lot of it growing outside. I mean, a tough bunch of it. <laughs> because it's really great uh, things and they're prolific. It just keep giving. 
<laughs> you plant the plant and then the little tubers come off of it and wow, just wonderful. I like a lot of water though. That's one thing about them. Like I said, flax seeds, just like uh, care, chia seeds, you know, about three or four ounces of the liquid that you take, take a flax seeds, put some water in, put it overnight, and it becomes very thick and makes it aquafaba. And you can use three or four ounces for substitute the eggs. Also, bananas, I think they do a great job, uh, especially if you uh, some kind of uh, baked good that has a lot of flavor, a lot of cinnamon or some other spices in it. It, it hides the banana flavor, and it really does a great job that way. Also, applesauce is a really good one, organic applesauce. It works really well as an egg replacement. And about a half a cup to a cup, depending upon your recipe, really does a great job holding everything together and uh, with very little flavor also. I find it really doesn't overwhelm things. And that's another thing you don't want to do is have something overwhelm your flavor, your baked good. Also, organic cornstarch, I use this very sparingly because it does have a lot of calories to it, but uh, I do use it once in a great while for particular things. And I find about one teaspoon uh, works really well. Uh, to replace eggs in the average um, baked good that you're going to have. Also, organic garbanzo bean flour. I find that is very sticky and it has a particular flavor. You want to cover it up. You have, uh, you know, strong flavors in your baked goods. That's really good. And about a half cup really works well mixed together with water and really holds things together too. Organic tahini. This really works well too. It's another egg replacement and uh, it's just a ground up sesame seeds into a liquid, with, you know, and it really does a great job. And about a third cup to a half cup for baked goods. It has a little bit of flavor, so if you have something a little stronger, it works well for, the, for that also. Uh, on the average, I find the aquafaba, you know, it comes from beans, the liquid, also from chia seeds and flax seeds. does a really great job. And one of my favorites, of course, is tapioca. Tapioca flour is one of my favorites. I, I just love cassava root anyway. We have a ton of it growing in the backyard. And I find that uh, these really work best. As far, and also, as far as flowers go, what I use on the average, I use a lot of oatmeal flour. I make my own. I just buy organic oats. Yeah, uh, no space to grow oats here. <laughs> you can buy 50 pounds of it, uh, of organic oats, and I grind it up in our high-speed blender and make a flour, and that really works great as far as flours go. I also get almond flour once in a while. Uh, that, that works great. Buckwheat flour is one of my favorites, too. That is really glutinous, too, as far as holding things together and does a great job, too. Really high in protein and that type of thing. Millet flour is another one that is really great. I, I love millet in general, and uh, I find it makes a really great millet loaf, which is... Mm, just like meatloaf, I, I love it in general. And you can buy, find a lot of my recipes now by going to paulhater.com. That's www.paulhater, P-A-U-L-H-A-I-D-E-R.com. And up in the right-hand corner next to testimonials, you'll see my recipes and my diet. And uh, so you have everything you need there to get on my diet and start on it and, and uh, really get back to feeling really healthy, you know. I'm just about 66 and I don't have an ache or pain or anything. I don't take any medications. I'm extremely healthy. Uh, and I work out with the weights and uh, walk eight miles a day. And you can do this too. And I'm going to live to be 150. I don't know about you, but you can do this. And I know you can do it. And we can get rid of 99% of all the diseases that come about that because of age-related type of stuff. And... And when we get on a vegan diet like mine, this anti-inflammatory diet uh, that I have, we can really point you in the direction of great health and towards healing in a great way. And I hope you will have, you know, take some of these uh, egg replacements and try them in your baking and uh, try to change things. You know, I love baking. I went to culinary school at the San Francisco Culinary Institute and uh, I didn't decide to do that because it's a lot of standing. <laughs> 
too much standing for me, but I love cooking in general and I have a lot of recipes. You'll see lots of them there. Also, if you go to my Facebook page under Dr. Paul Hater, you'll see a ton of face of recipes there. Uh, I post one every week and uh, you enjoy to enjoy those as much as you want and uh, share them with other people. And I find cooking exciting. <clears throat> I love uh, taking what people have in their kitchen and going into their kitchen. They say, we don't have anything in the fridge. We don't have anything. And I take it and make a great meal. <laughs> Just for what they have, you know. I said, well, we didn't know we could make that. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> It was really fun, and uh, uh, that makes a lot of uh, happy smiles in, the, in a lot of people's faces. So you could do this too. Learning to cook, I think, is really important for, for having a happy life, you know. If you don't cook, you're relying on somebody else to cook for you, and going to restaurants and eating, eating out all the time and that type of thing is really not that healthy. Uh, so it's really important that you learn to cook healthy and uh, make your meals as much as possible. And of course, eating a lot of raw food is important because we get a lot of live enzymes. We eat about 85% raw food and have a hot meal in the evening, and that really helps in a great way. And so if you want to get a hold of me, my phone number is 831-869-9119, 831-869-9119. Nine one one nine, and my email is drpaulhater at gmail dot com. That's d r p a u l h a i d e r at gmail dot com, and I'll be glad to help you in any way, shape, or form, and make a difference in your life. I do I recommend a donation of some kind because. Uh, I am so busy with consults these days. I mean, every day now I'm doing consults on the phone, consults on Skype. My Skype address is Dr. Paul Hater, and I want to be able to help you in great ways also. So also remember that um, you watch the little video ads there. We appreciate it. It can bring us a couple cents in our direction. Not much, but really a little bit. And uh, also, if you care to make a donation, go to paulhater.com and you can make a donation there too. And if you have questions, I really would appreciate some feedback. If you have questions or ideas for a show or ideas for you know, some topics I should talk about or some ways of improving this that you would like to see, you know, let me know. I'm open for everything. And if I can do it, you know, I'm a one-man show here, so that's not like I have a big film crew or anything. <laughs> It's me, myself, and I. We work together. <laughs> so if you can uh, let me know. You have your little comments there. I appreciate it. And we can make that happen. You know, you guys are always asking for particular things. And I put them on my list. And I try to get to them as soon as I can. But, you know, some, there's 2.5 million uh, different herbs and supplements out there, and I'm trying to cover as many as possible, but I don't know if I'll get to them all in my lifetime. <laughs> so have a great day, but the most important thing to remember is, I love you. <laughs>